Omicron is said to have been present in Europe earlier than previously thought. Now, that revelation has sparked new questions about the origins of the variant and if travel bans are an appropriate response. For a closer look, we're joined by Natasha Howard from NUS Sorsui Hock School of Public Health. Natasha, the WHO has been warning that vulnerable people should be avoiding travel. But at the same time, they've also cautioned countries to stop those travel bans. Is that stance perhaps indicative of the complexity of the situation with Omicron and what we're dealing with? I think, yes, we can look at it that way, right? So let's be honest. This is a sensible precaution on WHO's part, essentially saying, if you don't need to travel, if you're particularly vulnerable, it's best not to until we know more. So it does indicate that there's still a lot we don't know. And of course, nobody wants to be caught unprepared as happened with the appearance of the Delta variant. So caution is sensible, while panic, no, panic is not sensible. There, there's no indication that panicking would be useful at this stage. Uh, Natasha, a lot of effort now going to genome sequencing of this new variant. And uh, of course, Science uh, Netherlands today reporting cases uh, that were detected even before South Africa reported its case. Uh, there's signs that the strain has been around in several European countries. Does all this effort going into genome sequencing matter and in what way? It does matter because if we know when it arrived, when it emerged, then we have a, a much clearer idea of how, how much it might be able to outcompete. So for example, if it emerged much longer ago than we think, it might not be as competitive against Delta as we currently suspect, right? So whereas if it has emerged very recently, that suggests that we still don't know enough and we need to learn more. So, so knowing when it emerged is particularly important in terms of knowing how competitive it might be against, against the current dominant um, variant. Well, depending where one is in the world, Natasha, there isn't very much stomach for lockdown measures any longer as more countries reopen their borders. Now they're having to impose those travel bans again. So what other measures can countries take domestically to mitigate the spread of Omicron? I think this is the key question because exactly what we're seeing now is this immediate response to closed borders. And that is why WHO very clearly said that that's not indicated at this stage. And yet we're still seeing it happen because countries want to be very, very careful. That's understandable, but it's also very detrimental for travel plans, for the economy, et cetera. So it, if instead we think about what can countries do domestically, we would be, they would be rightly reviewing and strengthening infection present prevention procedures at all borders. They should be testing for Omicron if possible. High income countries such as Singapore are able to do this. They can also increase the number of PCR tests as we've seen Singapore is doing pre and post travel in order to try and catch more potentially infectious people and also considering the need for additional stay home measures or quarantine if called for. Again, preferable to immediately initiating travel bans due to the disruption that they cause. Natasha, thank you very much for talking to us this evening. Uh, Natasha Howard there from the NUS Sorsui Hawk School of Public Health.